Hey guys, that Canadian kid here bringing you episode 4 of Prospects BGM and I am actually kind of down right now because I messed up the recording of the audio twice. Um I messed up the one week and um because it was all choppy and then I did the rest of the epi- and then I did the next episode live but I had a cold so it just sounded bad so I didn't really want to do it so um my my throat's still sore so if I am quiet that's because I'm taking it like a drink of water or something cuz I don't like my mouth like my throat gets really dry and it's really painful if I don't get a drink of water like every once in a while so the reason I didn't go back and just do it all is because of a couple things that happened. You you guys will see them. This is one of them. We ended up getting Cody, I mean the Colorado Avalanche's first round pick for Cody Sessi. And this you this is huge because Colorado is last in the standings at this point. Like when I traded for him and you guys will see how they're doing later on in the episode um so PK Subban's hurt as you guys can see here uh for one week and if I'm not like on with everything it's because the screen's really small so I can't really tell like everything that's going on and uh like voicing over like voicing over I can't tell like exactly what I was thinking why I paused at some certain points and stuff like that so I really like that trade because Cody Sessi will probably would never play in our minor like in our NHL team so as you can see they're five points back in last place like it's early in the season but it's still five points back is pretty big because they're obviously not gonna make the playoff picture so like they're probably not going to be in the playoff picture anytime soon. Like they probably won't make it this season at all. So I'm expecting a top ten pick, and I didn't want to do this pick because I don't want to get rid of two player, two left wings especially. Like I don't want to give away two players that are that good, and especially not two left wings, because if someone gets hurt and we're down those, that's like three quarters of our left wings there. Uh, and, um, so as you guys can see here, Yakupov comes back, and then, so that's actually huge, because now we don't have to have, uh, Kot Stetson on our first line, and we can send Laton Dress down to our third, and move JVR over to our left wing, and then, just, and it's also really big, because we can drop Puempel from the team, and I really don't want a 57 overall on our team. Uh, so we end up I was considering putting Yurko on our um, third line instead of Latondres at left wing to kind of have a whole Detroit dynamic going on on our third line but um, I decided not to because it's hard, like the o difference in overall is pretty big and he's not even a third I mean a left wing anyways so and Laton Dress is. So here, um, Subban comes back. So that those are two big uh, like that's huge. We have Yakupov coming back, who's our first line right winger. And that also changes up the whole thing because now we have an extra left winger in J V R because we're playing him on the right wing because I didn't want to drop him down to the second line. And uh I like I didn't want to put Simmons on our first line so I actually probably should have moved, uh, moved Simmons to our right wing on our first line and put JVR on our uh, left wing on our first line but oh, well, can't go back and it actually turned out pretty well because as you can see we won a bunch of games and I was trying to stop simulating the whole time so I could edit our lines but um I ended up not because uh, it's 
I as you guys know, it's impossible to stop simulating in this game. Like, unless you you pretty much just have to wait it out. You can't press Y to stop simulating. But um, that's actually a funny story about how we got the Colorado pick was because we got an offer for Kotsteetsen and our second round pick for their first round pick. And I wasn't sure what where they were in the standings, so I declined the trade and went to check the standings out, but I couldn't stop simulating. And I would have definitely traded away Kotsteetsen and that second round pick for the first round pick, but I ended up not because I didn't know where they were in the standings. And then they offered that trade, so I, that was huge. And the reason why we were looking at Kopitar there was because I was explaining why he's in our trade block. Because under his overall, it says that he's a first line forward. And I don't want to put him on our first line for Taves. And I'll explain what this means. Um, so it says that he's a first line forward. And it means if you play him on like lower than the first line, he's most likely going down in overall unless you have an amazing season with him. So if you want to maintain their overall or boost it up, you have to play them on their lineup. And it, like obviously, they have to have good potential. But if they um, are on a lower line, you have to like literally score a hundred points with them in the year to get them to over like go up a one like even by just by one overall. So. Here we go, and this is good because we have Reinhardt coming back. Like, he just got hurt, but he's coming back in three days, and then Gormley coming back in ten days. So that's pretty big because those are two big parts of our uh, defense because Reinhardt's part of our third defensive pair, and he's p and um, Gormley's part of our second defensive pair, I'm pretty sure. But I'm not sure how this will work out with uh, Brody. I'm pretty sure I put... I have to drop Reinhardt from our team, send him down to the minors. But um, so I'm really uh oh yeah. Well, I forgot what I was gonna say. I just completely lost my train of thought. One second, I just gotta get a drink, guys. Okay. Um, so we are twenty and thirteen right now, which is huge because. I'm not harm sure what we were at the beginning of this episode, but it was definitely not six games above 500. So we're gonna simulate this game against Ottawa. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, and here we go. We have power play, but we cannot convert. And this team is not very good, but they do pick up the first goal on us which kind of sucks but as you can see they don't have any all-star players really like they do have they have a good physical team with uh Bufflin and they have Nathan Horton and I think that's about it for their like they probably have some better players like Heatley's a pretty good player but um I can't I don't I haven't seen anyone that's really that good so far besides Bufflin and Horton but we are winning I mean we are losing going into the third hopefully we can pick up a goal tie it up and send it to overtime if not better than that so and here we go Gustav Nyquist a second goal like I knew that happened but I just didn't want to give it away or anything I really like Nyquist on our team he's really good player I don't know if you guys watch the playoffs he played well for Detroit and um so uh we end up going into the overtime to play it so here we go against Ottawa Senators Oh, I, I wasn't, sorry, I <laughs> I was just getting another drink, guys. Um, So here we go. They're just comparing our lines. I actually think that this might be the only team in the NHL that we have a better first line of than. So we start off with Taves, Yakupov, and then our Schultz-Suban pairing at D. 
and we come in and we get tripped right away and this kind of sucks because we have Schultz I don't want a backhand forehand to end the game so I try to fake shot and then go high glove it works sometimes but clearly it didn't work this time so this actually kind of sucks because I tried to do a slap shot but the way it happened was I went too far to the left when I went to wind up for the slap shot and I actually go backhand on it so here we go and we snipe one high glove to take to win the game it's always nice to have an overtime win especially that early into the overtime like I don't really know what happened to that team though they don't have a good goalie they don't have an all-star player or anything so this is actually kind of funny because we have like our leading score is actually Anze Kopitar and he only has 14 goals even though we are 21 and 14 like we're one of the better teams in the NHL and our leading goal score has 20 I mean 14 goals like Ottawa's leading score is Danny Heatley with like 19 I think it said and just that's not really acceptable but um so I don't really t I get a couple of these first round pick offers for cut seats in, but I'm not 100% sure where they are in the standings so I don't want to make any moves to um like I don't want to make any moves that I'll regret because I don't do my research before I do them so as you guys can see we lost to Toronto and the reason I go back to look at them is because we got an offer for their first round pick before and I ended up not taking it and it was definitely a smart decision because they ended up getting a bunch of points and um, so it would have been a horrible decision on our part and here Katsitsin scores to get an early lead and so it looks like we're going to take a one nothing lead going into the second period which is all usually a good thing so here we are and we pick up an early goal with uh, Shifley getting a goal off a deflection I said and Taves picks up a goal it's always good to see uh, what, like your best player get a goal and here Kopitar picks up a goal so it's always nice to see those better players especially when you do a fantasy draft it's always good to see your better players like producing because it makes it seem like it's worth your uh, worth the pick so here we are. I was really hoping to um, get the shutout on this, but I'm pretty sure they do pick up a goal with a cup, like with seven minutes left or something like that. Yeah, with five minutes thirty three seconds. But um, you know, it's always it always sucks when you give up a late goal like that. But we do pick up the win, which is most important. Especially, it's nice to get four one lead with a team that isn't as good as ours the one big thing that is the reason why we're doing so well is because Bishop is playing very well so here we go I think this is this is the last week that we do and Kopitar is still leading our team in goals with 15 like we really should have a better goal score than that but you know we don't so try our best I guess but I guess it doesn't really matter as long as we're winning. So Kopitar ended up did did end up scoring again, and we won three one. So we are just going off. Like we can kind of guarantee that we're going to be in the playoffs if we keep going like this. So this is getting near the end of the video. So I'm just going to start wrapping this up. Um, if you guys like this be sure to comment what you want to see in our next video. Like the video, and if you're new please subscribe so I guess I will see you guys later peace out and um, oh and one last thing we are six in the standings and Colorado still in last